As a part of the renovation to this bathroom, I have to move this towel rail. So today I'm going to show you how to drain down your central heating system, or should I say partially drain it down, and how to move a radiator or towel rail, although in my case, just a few inches. But you know what they say, sometimes a couple of inches makes all the difference. So yes, I'm doing a bit of refurbishment here in my family bathroom upstairs. And this thing, I need to move all but just a few inches. But it's important because between the edge of this towel rail and the other side of the wall is essentially going to be a walk-in wardrobe, which means that this towel rail needs to move around about 200 mil to the right, just so I've got enough room in this section here to get the wardrobes and the wall in that I really want to put into this walk-in wardrobe. And this rail is just fixed with copper piping at the bottom here, coming straight out of the wall. So I need to open up a couple of holes around those copper pipes, just to make sure that I can actually move this rail to exactly where I want it to. And I think before I do that, the first thing I need to remove is a skirting board. The skirting boards in my house are generally fixed with glue and brad nails, but the decorator's cork seal in the top needs to be cut first just to help release it. To cut through the plasterboard, I'm going to be using a multi-tool, so I put some tape on the blade at the 12mm mark, so I know that I'm not going all the way through the 12.5mm or half inch board, because I don't know at this stage what's behind it, so I don't really want to go all the way through and end up damaging a water pipe. I don't like using a multi-tool on plasterboard because of the amount of dust it makes, but it's the safest way to do this at this stage. I start with a small cutout around the pipe and quickly find OSB directly behind the plasterboard. I assume because it's a bathroom. I'm not sure why, because it's not water resistant. I eventually remove enough plasterboard and OSB so I can extend the pipework, at which point I get a bit of a surprise. Oh, wow. Oh, you must be joking. So that's the right hand one fully exposed. And I think it's fair to say that I found a little bit more than I was expecting. I was actually expecting just a plasterboard void there, but I've obviously got all these structural timbers. I think I can still work around it, although it does mean that some of that timber is coming out. Structurally, I don't think that's a problem because I'm not going to take all of it out. So let's get on to the one on the left, see what I find there. Now I know what I'm dealing with with this second hole, I go straight into the full size cutout. Although I've been working carefully around this pipework, trying not to put any stress on it. Now, when I just move the plasterboard, it twists the pipe slightly and... Oh, You're joking. So that's been finger tight all this time until I work next to it and then it wants to come away. You are joking. It appears the main nut connecting the valve to the towel rail has always only ever been finger tight, which must be how the builder left it when they completed the house. So somehow it sat there for the last four years without leaking. So I'm sure some of you are thinking, Stuart, why didn't you just bite the bullet and drain down the system and take the radiator off? It would have been a lot easier cutting out these holes without the radiator in the way. Well, what I've done so far is really exploratory. I wanted to just confirm that I can move it like I want to and also what fittings I need. So it's actually now the next day. I've been and bought the fittings that I need 
So I didn't really want to drain it down and then refill it and then drain it down again. But I think I can do what I want to do. So now's the time to drain it down. Now, when you're draining down your central heating system, all the videos you'll see on YouTube will show you how to drain down the whole system. But I don't actually want that. I just want to drain down this one radiator. So I'm now going to show you how I can drain down this without draining the others. The bathroom and radiator I'm working on is on the upstairs floor of my house. So if I just drain the system to get that empty, potentially all the other radiators on the upstairs floor of my house are gonna drain as well. But there's no need for that because I'm not actually working on these. So what I'm gonna do is close off each of the other radiators on the upstairs floor and hold the water in the radiator, although I'm gonna drain the one that I'm working on. Now to do that, I need to shut the valves each end of the radiator. Now one of them is a thermostatic valve, which is obviously very straightforward. And I also need to close off the valve at the other end of the radiator, and I've got what's called a lock valve, which is a very standard valve capped off with this sort of domey plastic cap. And once upon a time, you could turn these over and use them as a key to adjust these valves, but now they just seem to be just a bit of plastic, so I'm gonna to have to use an adjustable spanner. But before you go closing all your lock valves, if your central heating system has been balanced, and what that means is that these valves have been adjusted so it all heats up together, so you don't get a really hot radiator and something that is really cold and never gets hot, then when you close these, rather than having to balance it all again, if you actually count the number of revolutions that you have to turn to close it, then when we open it up again, we just put it back to that position. So uh, as I close this, I'm just gonna count how many revolutions. I'm just gonna put a post-it note on here. So when we do the opposite in a couple of hours time, I can just put it back to where it was. I go around and close all the valves to the other upstairs radiators, except for the one that I'm working on. One. Two. Oh, that's sharp. Two. In my boiler room, after making sure the top up valves are closed, I connect a hose to a drain point near my underfloor heating manifold. Or this also could be a downstairs radiator. And with the outlet pointed at a drain, I open the valve. I can hear the water draining out and the system pressure on the boiler naturally falls away. Now it's draining, I also open the bleed valve at the top of the radiator just to make sure that all the water drains out freely. And after a few minutes, it's totally empty, and that means that I can disconnect it from the pipework. Oh, that was finger tight as well. That is not clever. With all the pipes disconnected, I can then take the tower rail off of the wall and just store it to one side while I work on the new piping. Whether you're moving a radiator, or in my case a tower rail, the process is essentially exactly the same. For me though, I'm just using less pipe. I'm actually moving this towel rail just 220 millimetres. So sort of in situ, I measure the various lengths of the new pipes I need and work out the bends, which doesn't have to be 100% accurate because I've got some flexibility because the connecting pipe work that runs through the house is actually in plastic. So there's plenty of movement on that. So you may have already noticed that I'm actually going for soldered connections. That wasn't my intention. I was actually going to use push fit because I think they're just really quick and easy, but they are quite chunky. And because I'm taking timber away and everything's a little bit tight, 
these are just going to make my life cutting timber out a lot harder. So I've decided to go for something slim and cheap and cheerful, so soldered it is. I clean the ends to be soldered with some wire wool and then coat them with some flux. These are Yorkshire fittings which come with the solder already within the fitting, ready to melt onto the pipe. I stop as soon as I see the silver solder flowing around the joint and it's done. I angle the pipe in my vise and put in some water just to make sure that while I'm heating the next joint the first one doesn't re-melt on me. While I'm heating it I'm also adjusting it by eye just so I can get the joints in line and square to each other. To get the pipe in behind the plasterboard I need to remove some of this timber that I've come across. I wouldn't recommend taking out any structural timber from your house. However, I don't think a little bit like this is really going to affect it. With the pipe work in place, I can reattach the towel rail to the wall in its new position. And the two fixings on the right hand side, ironically, screw straight into this timber structure, which I came across earlier and I had to trim, which actually gives me a really good fixing to the wall. With the water drained out of it, I take the opportunity to add some inhibitor to the system just by opening up the top and using a funnel to pour it in. No special pipe work required. With the towel rail reconnected, I can tighten everything up, making sure the bleed valve on the radiator I've been working on is closed before I fill it up. I can then open the bleed valve and bleed all the air out of that one radiator until it's absolutely full. With it full, I've now put the heating on, which naturally pressurises the system to its highest amount, more than when you top it up cold, which is a good time to check for any leaks. All the other radiators can now be opened and the whole thing goes back to normal. I'm going to leave all the joints open for a couple of days, just because I'm in no rush to put everything back at this stage. And ironically, because I've got the OSB right behind the plasterboard, it's going to make a really good lip for me to fix some new plasterboard to so I can fill these holes so no one in the future will ever know I've even moved this rail. So that is nice and warm and back to normal. And if you're going to drain down your heating system or even partially drain it down, expect some air still to be in it when you recharge it. So use it for a couple of days and then go around all your radiators and re-bleed them. You may find that one or two of them have got quite a lot of air in and that's just the air working its way around the system until it gets stuck in a radiator. I hope you've enjoyed this video and it's given you some clues on how to move radiators. I will see you next time.